front here instead of going up on the stage at the beginning, if that makes some difference to you for the camera. <laughs> Good evening. Small crowd, but good crowd, safe crowd to speak in front of is what they tell me. Um, we've got some people watching online on YouTube as well. Um, and then if you want to rewatch it or share it with your family later, it will still be up there where they can go back and watch um, the girls' presentation. So, um, welcome to Senior Internship Presentation Night. Uh, first thing I want to say is the best thing going on is we're in this beautiful facility. Um, we used to do these in the cafeteria on a little tiny stage. and. So we're, we're just blessed to have this. It's our like, first time to really use the screen and project it with this group, and, and we're excited about it. Um, we have six interns all speaking tonight. We're going to take an hour of your time and, and get you out of here quickly. Um, we are going to have cookies and tea and water down in the nest when you get done. They're prepackaged if you want to grab some on your way by and, and take a look down there and visit with the kids. And then we have a couple of awards at the end of tonight, too, so if you can stick around for that, we appreciate it. And first off, um, I want to thank you for letting your kids take the internship. I think they took a chance to take the class, and during a COVID year, it, it was challenging, but we had two kids intern in the fall and four in the spring, and um, they've got some really awesome experiences um, to share with you. So without further ado, we'll let Avery kick it off. So I walked about 40,000 steps, I answered about 515 questions, I repeated myself about a thousand times, and I had about 30 IOUs every day, but I survived my kindergarten internship. So I decided to intern at Garden Plain Elementary. I picked Garden Plain because I went to school there, so I know the amazing faculty and staff and amazing teachers that we have and I knew I'd have an amazing experience. My mentors were Joan Pauly and Sam Shayan. Um, Sam went to school at WSU and he has been teaching for three years, and Joan went to school at Friends and has been teaching for 28 years. Um, it was very beneficial to be able to mentor with both of these amazing teachers. Um, being able to mentor someone who's in the beginning of their year, of their teaching career, and someone who has many years of experience was interesting, and it gave me um, an idea of what it would be like if I became a teacher. So here are some pictures. On the left is a picture of me teaching a lesson. Um, I loved being able to teach lessons. It gave me hands-on experience with my students um, and what it would be like if I became a teacher. And then on the right is a picture of us doing one of our big projects at the end of the year. Um, we decided to make cookies from scratch with 40 kindergartners. If you've never done it, it is quite a challenge, um, but it was lots of fun. Um, some skills I gained, I gained lots of communication skills. I was able to learn how to talk professionally um, to students and build a relationship where I was a leader to them. Um, I learned lots of new teaching techniques um, from both teachers. They were able to teach me so much of all the different ways you can teach and how to teach to different students that learn different ways. Um, I did lots of testing for students. I was able to do most of their diagnostic testings at the beginning of the year, so I was able to take them into a separate room and be able to test them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I learned lots of patience. <laughs> you need patience in order to survive kindergarten. Um, you can't get frustrated or flustered with a kid when they're maybe not understanding what the lesson is. You have to be understanding and patient and keep explaining it to them. Um, I learned lots of leadership. You have to be a leader in the classroom if you want your students to be able to learn and enjoy their time in your classroom. Um, and I learned lots of behavior techniques. Kindergarten has lots of different behaviors, and so it was very beneficial to be able to learn how to handle those behaviors and not get frustrated and upset when there are some behaviors that got on my nerves a little bit. <laughs> 
Um, some of my daily tasks where I did printing, copying, and laminating about every day. Um, there's always, we're always busy in kindergarten, so there's always something that we had to do. Um, I did lots of diagnostic testing, which I'll show you what those look like on the separate slide. Um, I taught a lot of sinners, and that was one of my favorite things as well, because I was able to get that hands-on experience again with those students and what it would be like if I became a teacher. Um, I, assisted, I assisted students with anything from tying their shoelaces to how to pronounce a letter. Um, that was again one of my favorite parts because I got to work with those students and create a bond with them. Um, I did prep work for projects and I'll show you all the projects that we did. Um, and it was just anything from helping tie a wire to a bed spring to printing out stuff and making it as easy for the kindergartners to do the next day. Um, and I made lots of tests. Mrs. Polly was um, grateful enough to let me use one of her programs to create lots of tests for her students um, that they then completed later on. So this is one of our projects. Um, we made snowman from bed springs. Um, so we got the bed springs I think, from like Craigslist or something. I'm not for sure. Um, and then we got yards of fabric and cut the stars, styrofoam balls for the heads and then I helped them hot glue all of the buttons and eyes and nose on. And then this is a diagnostic test. So at the top they're just going to identify what letter it is, they're going to identify what sounds it makes, um, what colors those are, and then some sight words as well. So my favorite parts was I got lots of advice. Um, I probably got about five pieces of advice a day. Um, so I don't remember all of it, but they were always willing to give me words of encouragement or advice on what I should do when I became a teacher and how to succeed in my future. Um, I loved leading centers because again, it gave me hands-on experience and it gave me a chance to bond with those students more. Um, I loved connecting with the students. They all have so many fun and different personalities. That was always interesting to hear what they're going to say every day. Um, I loved teaching worksheets because, again, it gave me that hands-on experience of what it would be like if I became a, te a teacher to decide that was the right career path for me. And I observed some absolutely fantastic teaching. I am so grateful that my mentors welcomed me into their classroom and I was able to see how fantastic of teachers they are. Some difficulties were, of course, COVID. It's been a difficult year, but of course, always reminding these kindergartners that they have to wear their mask and dealing with them not wanting to wear it or reminding them they have to pull it above their nose. Um, I had no experience before, um, so just learning how to become that leader in that classroom and really be able to lead those students into greatness. Um, and students' behaviors, um, they got on my nerves quite a bit. <laughs> and so it's just important to keep a positive professional um, <clears throat> professional environment around them and to be able to lead them in and not feed into their negative behavior. So this is my internship project. I created a handwriting and sentence forming workbook. So on the left is what the front cover would look like and then their names would go on the top. And then over here is one of the pages, so it's just writing the sentence, tracing it, and learning how to write their words correctly. And then on the left again is another one of those worksheets, and then on the right is what a worksheet one of the students did. Um, those pictures above were scrambled below, and they had to put them in the correct order, and then write the sentence. This was one of my last days in kindergarten, and as soon as I walked in the door, they all came up and gave me a great big hug. And it was one of my favorite parts because it showed how much of an impact I'd made on the students and how much they had actually enjoyed their time with me. And then my future plans is to go to WSU or K-State, and I've decided to major in sports marketing. Um, kindergarten is absolutely amazing, and I was so grateful for it because it helped me decide that education is probably not the best path for me and that I have more of a passion for sports marketing. <laughs> and of course, I want to give a big thank you to Mrs. Polly and Mr. Jan um, for welcoming me into their classroom. Um, I'm of course so grateful that they let me come in and welcome me with big open arms. 
And a first big thank you to Mrs. Clark for letting me be a part of the internship program because it gave me a chance to find out that education is not the best path for me. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and so next up is Kitty McReynolds and her trip to Oak Street.
learning versus memorizing, that was a really big one for me because there's a difference between memorizing information and truly like remembering the information. So that was something that I had to learn how to teach. And then I also had to learn to engage the students in different lessons, whether that be more visual lessons, more lecture type lecture, uh, lessons for second graders. And then organizing a schedule for the class. Again, I think structure and like class for management is something I really learned and were some key takeaways for me. The toughest part of my internship was trying to teach the students around me in a way where they weren't just memorizing the information, but they were truly learning. So if I told the student I'm working with, write your spelling words each 25 times and take the test Friday, did they truly learn? Probably not. They don't know why they're spelling the word that way. They don't know what's the little like saying that goes with the word. So I know that like I go for E except between like any of that. They don't get it if they're just memorizing it. So that was something that I had to work on with them. And then there were some bumps in my internship um, for sure. Um, definitely behavior and disrespect was kind of an issue that I had. But that's of course in any classroom that you're going to be in. But at times it was hard because these students were smart and they knew that I was just an intern, so I don't have much power. And so sometimes they would take advantage of that, but it did lead me into my semester project. So my semester project was teaching the kids how to be bucket fillers, and I'm going to explain that to you in a second. I want to first read this quote. It says, educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. Um, and this was said by Aristotle. So, as I said earlier, as an educator, you're spending more time with the student than their parents, if not a lot more. And you might be the only adult in the student's life that's paying attention to them. And so you have not only a huge impact on like what they know, but what kind of people they're going to be in the future. So, the first thing I did with my project is I read the students a book by Carol McLeod called Have You Filled a Bucket Today? And it talks about being a bucket filler. So, I talked to the students afterwards about what it means to be a bucket filler. An example of being a bucket filler is doing kind things and in return your bucket's filled up because you did something good. Not being a bucket filler is being rude to people and then their bucket's empty and so is yours. So that's again just me reading the book. The next thing I did was I built a bulletin board with my mother. And the far left, that's like the progress of the bulletin board. And then I have on the far right, the supplies that I used. And this is the finished product. So in the center, there's like a little bucket with a slip in there for the students to put their papers in from the far left. So what they would do during the week, they would grab the paper if they felt like their bucket was filled by someone. So they would put their name. So for example, my name is Kennedy. Who filled your bucket, Ms. Clark? How did Ms. Clark fill my bucket by allowing me to be an intern this semester? And then on Thursdays, what I would do is I would bring a big treasure chest full of prizes, and whoever filled someone else's bucket would get like a really cool prize or something. And it excited them, so that was good. Um, in the beginning of this, I actually was reading the papers myself, but I noticed like a disconnect with the project, like it wasn't very personal. And so I allowed the students to actually read it to each other in front of the whole class, and I think. There's a lot of power in being appreciated by your peers. So it made a really big impact on the kids. And then my best day of internship was by far my last day. Um, <laughs> mainly because I'm a pretty hard personality at times and I can just be hard on people and I have really high expectations. And so at times I was like, man, I don't think these kids like me very much. But on my last day, like I felt very appreciated for all the work and like I feel like people actually saw my heart through each action that I was doing. The students that I thought I cared the least cared the most on my last day. So that was just rewarding to see. Um, one of the little boys that I thought like absolutely did not like me, um, as I was leaving, he asked me, during your free time, Miss Kennedy, are you going to come visit us? Can you just please come visit us before you graduate? And I told him yes. So on May 14, I'm going to Oak Street's Field Day, and I'm going to surprise all the students. So very excited about that. And then again, that's just the little boy I worked with this semester. His name's Corbin. He doesn't really like pictures, but that was the best one we could get. I kept telling him, put on your mask, and he's like, no, I don't want to smile. I was like, okay. But that's what we got. And then Ms. Peck, my mentor, she said, every decision you make, remember to do what's best for kids, which is 
pretty wise advice for all future educators. And finally, um, my future goals, I'm going to be attending French University next year. Um, I'll be chairing there, majoring in elementary ed, and then I would like to go back to school like way down the road and get my master's in administration to be a principal someday. So, exciting things. Um, so thank you Oak Street for having me and Miss Keck. Thank you Miss Clark for having the internship program. And next up is Miss Elaine McKim. Down home as well. 
My next step, I will be opening up my own nutrition club. We have actually found a place and I will be signing a lease um, hopefully next week. And we plan to be open around midsummer, um, early fall. Um, I would like to give a huge thank you to my mentors and to Ms. Clark for letting me get this experience. And as I bid my farewell, I would like to introduce Allison Kelly. that someone with an eye condition would consider optometry as a potential future career. Well, my eye condition, as well as my fair share of amazing optometrists, have been what's driven me to want to become one of them one day. So, because of that, this past fall semester, I decided to complete my internship at West Wichita Family Optometrist in Goddard, Kansas, with Dr. Emily Becker as my mentor. So, West Wichita Family Optometrist has two offices, one in Wichita as well as one in Goddard, which is where I was at. And they've actually been around since the 1930s and have always wanted their main focus to be on the patients. Um, a lot of times, doctors will focus on just getting the prescription right as well as any diagnosis. And of course, they wanted to have that correct, but they also just wanted to make sure the patient felt as though they weren't just another number in their office and really wanted to get to know them on a personal level. level. And then, so most of you have probably seen this basic setup before at your eye doctor office. Um, but this is where I spent a lot of my time when I would shadow the eye doctors and would really learn how to build a doctor-patient relationship by watching Emily do that. And then here is the eyewear selection at the office that I was at. Um, as you can tell, they have quite a bit for how small of an office they actually were. And I was actually able to learn how to kind of tell which style of glasses fit each face shape, as well as just seeing how it lined up with their eyes. Um, so my first mentor here is Dr. Emily Becker. She graduated from Garden Point High School in 2002 and went on to study biology at Newman University and graduated from there in 2006. For her optometry school, she attended the University of Houston College of Biology and graduated from there in 2010. She actually worked at West Wichita Family Optometrist while she was in school, so having that connection made it much easier for her to get a job there when she was actually trained to do so. And then when I had asked her what she believed the biggest struggles were when it came to the job, she said, business aspect of it all as well as just the different personalities that you can encounter with patients as well as other co-workers. And then when I asked her what she believed the best advice was, was to just kind of stick with it all. Um, it's going to get really tough with all the schooling that you have to do, but if you just find your ambition, you'll be able to make it. So my second mentor here is Miss Monica Allen. She graduated from East High School in 1980 and actually didn't intend any post-secondary education other than a little bit of trade school for the job. Um, so she works as an optician out at West Wichita Family Optometrist and believes that the biggest struggles also were just the personalities that you can encounter. And when I asked her what the most rewarding part of her job was, was she said that it was the connections that you can make with people and how everybody at the office kind of feels like a family. So on the left, <laughs> all right. on the left here is Monica, and then on the right is Tristan. And um, one thing I wanted to note was just how um, welcoming everybody was when it came to um, when I got to the office. Um, when I got there my first day, I was extremely nervous, and they were just really able to help me out and answer any questions I had, and just made me feel like I was really a part of what they were doing. So some of the skills that I gained in my internship not only are going to help me just in life in general, but as well as any future job that I have. Um, I gained a lot of communication skills just watching Emily and everybody else at the office and how they did their jobs. 
As well as phone etiquette, that was a big one for me, is I was not a big fan on answering phones. And just being able to do a lot of confirmation calls was what made me a lot more comfortable with answering the phone and talking to strangers. Um, as well as doctor-patient relationship and observe, observation, um, watching how the doctors act towards patients and how professional they all are, just helps me learn how to do that in the future. Um, some of the tasks that I did at my internship were shadowing a lot of eye exams. I was, again, able to see how they acted with the patients. Um, I tagged a lot of classes. Um, I did a lot of kind of office work there. And tagging those classes, I just pretty much put the price tag on them and put them in the correct spot where they belonged on the case. Did a lot of confirmation calls, which again is where I gained a lot of uh, experience with answering the phones, and then I inputted a lot of patients into the system by putting in their birth dates and just making sure that they were in for their uh, appointments. So, this was the room that they did all their pre testing in. The pre testing was just where they took a picture of the back of the eye so that the doctors could make sure that everything was healthy and everything was running smoothly. And that was just done with the machine there on the left. This machine here was what the doctors used to get a basic idea of what a patient's prescription is going to be, so that once they get into the actual eye exam room, they didn't have to start from scratch um, when they were testing their prescriptions. So this machine was what they used to make sure that the prescription on the lenses they got back from the lab were correct. Um, once the lab sent them back the lenses that they were giving out to patients, you obviously wanted to make sure that they were correct and not didn't have any abnormalities in them. So they just put the lens on to the machine there and centered it out into where it would test the prescription on that. This here, this area here, is where they would make sure that the glasses fit the patients correctly and would adjust them to make sure they were fitting the patient well and making sure everything was fit right, and this is where they would also replace any lenses they needed to. Some of the best advice that I gained from my internship was to be involved. That was a big one. Um, obviously, your grades are important and keeping up with your work is important, but if you're involved and are able to do outside activities, then you're going to stand out in the crowd from any other applicants. As well as networking with other optometrists, in order to get into optometry school, you do have to have recommendations from other optometrists and have to have good connections. So if you don't build those while in school, then your chances of being admitted into opt optometry school are pretty low. Um, if you do the work, you can make it. Obviously, if you're willing to do the work that no one else is wanting to do and you're putting in extra hours in order to get where you want to go, then you're going to stand out again and make yourself look like a better applicant compared to everybody else. And then to just stick with your goals, um, school is going to be tough. You've got at least eight years to get out of optometry school from the time you get out of high school. And so it's going to get tough and you're not going to want to do it, but if you can find something that you can enjoy, then you're going to be better off. So some challenges that I faced in my internship was COVID-19, of course. That was a big one for me, it was even just being able to find a place to complete my internship at. Obviously, in a time where no one knows what's happening, a lot of times places weren't very open to allowing a random high schooler to come into their business and stay with them. So I was lucky enough to find such an amazing place to complete my internship. Um, but just with that, I was able to find that, and I was even looking more so into the ophthalmology field for my internship, but because of COVID, it kind of limited my abilities to get in there. And then my limited abilities, obviously I don't have a degree in anything, so I couldn't really complete any work on any patients or do anything like that. And then just the age of patients, this office was mostly older folks and with past shadowing experience, 
I've chatted with a pediatric ophthalmologist and realized that I kind of like the field of children better and think that's more so what I want to go into. So for my semester project, I wanted to do something that was going to help other people out, just like optometrists do, to help people with their side issues. So I decided to collect and uh, donate some old sunglasses and glasses to the Lions Club and was able to set up donation boxes at the Garden Pit High School as well as the Garden Pit State Bank and then just marketing and advertising my um, semester project on social media and was able to collect 214 pairs of glasses to donate to the Lions Club. So some special events that I got to see was, my first one was I got to see a central retinal vein occlusion, which is where the main vein in your eye um, that drains the blood got closed off partially or completely. And I had never even heard of one of those, let alone seen what one of those looked like. So being able to see that and just learn what it was was a really interesting experience to me. I also learned how they kind of test children's eyes for sight issues. Obviously, they don't know how to read at such a young age, and so they can't just tell what letters are up on the screen. So they actually just use a light and kind of wave it across the eyes. Much more complicated than I'm stating here, but um, then they're able to tell kind of if children have sight issues that need to be fixed such early on. Um, I also got to help decorate the office for Christmas which kind of just made me feel like more included and like I was actually a part of their business there. So for my future plans, I plan to attend Nebraska Wesleyan University where I will be running track there. Um, I plan to major in biochemistry or biology and minor in health and fitness studies. Um, I chose Nebraska because their acceptance into medical school is extremely high for being a pretty small school and they just have an amazing place and such. And then I put after my four years, I plan to attend either medical school or optometry school in hopes to become either an optometrist or ophthalmologist. So I just wanted to give a big thank you to all my mentors and everybody at West Wichita Family Optometrist, as well as Ms. Clark for helping me find my internship. Um, my parents for helping pay for the gas to get out to my internship, and then everybody who donated to my semester project. And next up is going to be Ms. Tatum Tool on her split journey. So basically, 
it was built early in the 2000s and they wanted to make it more up to date and accessible for older seniors. So part of our job was to go on site and I went with Reagan and we measured one of the houses and you can see on the left our measurements that we took. And these measurements were just to be used to put into the system and kind of start the design process. And then this is another thing I did almost on a daily basis. This was called pizza boxing. It sounds weird, but we used pizza boxes and we used all the finishing materials for a project and then keep those materials for future uses. So the box on the left is actually Martin Plain High School because SPT did the Rimmick Bond this year. And so basically this is all of our remodeled areas and they keep these materials so that in the future if Garden Plain was to add on another auditorium they can match all the materials inside. And then on the right is just the materials list that I would follow to make sure that all the materials were in the box when it goes to storage. This was another big thing that I did almost every day and it's just, just basically organizing paint samples. So as I mentioned on the last slide, they do pizza boxing, but after like 15 years they get rid of the pizza boxes and they move everything onto a digital file. And so all those materials get put back away so they can get used for future use. And I was one of the putter wares, I guess, as you could put it. And so basically, it's just on the right is all the boxes of the paint, and then the left is one of the single boxes, and then the bottom picture is the paint sample that I would put away. And then this is just called their large conference area at SPT, and this is where they hold like client meetings as well as big representative um, clients meetings. And with COVID, of course, the TV was used a lot for Zoom meetings. And then this was just like their workroom slash kitchenette that they would hang out in as well as print and copy. And then this was one of my favorite areas because it was kind of like that chill workroom environment, but it was also like, could be used for meetings and yeah. And so I just, as you can see, you have the TV and you have the comfy seating and the kind of like the house feel in an office environment. And then this was, as you can see, one of my main areas that I worked at. This time I was on the computer doing some designing software environment things. And then also this is where I did like some sample putting aways and sample data entry. And then my best day at SPT was probably the first, which is a shocker for most, but on the very first day I got there and I met all the people and my mentor right away said, we're going to go on site to a client meeting. I was like, okay, like, sounds cool. And we drive and we went to Star Lumber on West Street and I actually got to sit in on a multi-million dollar home building. And this client was building her dream home with her husband and she wanted lots of advice from her designers and builders. And so I was sitting there and she's like, the client was like, do you like this? Does that look good? And I'm like, Honey, I'm first day intern, like, don't ask me. <laughs> it was just nice because if I were to go into interior design, I knew right away that residential design would be my way to go instead of commercial designing. And then, as I mentioned, I was on a split journey, and so before I started my second internship, I decided to do some more experiences because with COVID, you have limited time with mentors, and so I decided to do some CRNA shadowing in between. And my first certified nurse anesthetist that I shadowed was Jenny Ewing, and she is with a special anesthesia services group. She doesn't work in a, like a general office or a hospital. She travels in the state of Kansas, and she does um, anesthesia work on all ages, but mostly kids. And one of the um, shadow days that I sat on with her, it was actually at a dentist's office, and it was a non-intubated procedure because they needed the airway for dental work. But it was still an eye-opening experience because you don't think that anesthesia could be for dental work. And then secondly was with Jason Nichols. She's also a CRNA and it was at Cypress Surgery Center. And although she was doing the anesthesia, anesthesia side, I also got to see the surgery side of the operations. And so it was mostly just knees such as ACL repairs, menis meniscus repairs, and knee replacements. But it was still an eye-opening experience because I got to see the surgery side along with the anesthesia. And so for my final nine weeks, I decided to go with Wichita Primary Care, which is just your general doctor's office. My mentor was Crystal Grimes. She's the one on the far left. 
Crystal attended Friends University where she actually played basketball and she majored in biology and she minored in chemistry and she has over 24 years of experience in the health field. And then she attended WSU after Friends and she got her PA degree. And she is currently at Wichita Primary Care with Dr. Heidi Larson. She's on the right. Heidi is the main owner of Wichita Primary Care. They both worked together at Via Christi for a long time and then they decided they want to open up their own practice. And so here we are at Wichita Primary Care. Their newest location is actually at Ridge and 21st. These are just some of the examples of the office rooms. And why I like to put these up here is because Heidi was a very outgoing person who loved the color pink. So she designed all of her rooms herself. The pictures, pillows, chairs, everything was her doing because her slogan was, if it looks good, people will be happy. And then this was another room on the right where they did a lot of Botox injections, which they actually do in office, which was cool to see. And then on the left is the lab area where they just drew blood and then also used the counter space to run tests, urine samples, and blood samples. My best day at Wichita Primary Care was probably the day I learned to give shots. I am inexperienced, I have no experience in the medical field, and Crystal one day said, would you like to give a shot? And I was like, I have no idea how to do this. And she goes, well, you can learn, and then you're going to go do it to the patient. And I'm like, okay. And so I actually practiced before I went to the patient, but as a person who is not fond of getting shots, I was fond of giving the shots. And then this is a urinary, urinary analysis test that I got to run. So they basically just have the patients pee in the cup and then they run it for, they can use it for drug screening or just for typical making sure you don't have diabetes or your hemoglobin is running good, you have no blood in your urine, things like that. And then these are just some pictures of the office. On the left is Crystal again. And then Lauren is on the right. Lauren actually was a fall intern with Crystal from Ando High School, but she graduated that semester in December, and they hired her on afterwards to be a nurse. She's a very fun filled spirit, as you can see. And then on the right is Lauren again, and then in the middle is Marianne. She's a nurse, and she's been at Wichita Primary Care from the beginning. And then Sherry is another nurse, and she's been there as well from the beginning. And then for my semester project, I decided to do a video my video was basically just a general video on good health habits because in the office I saw a lot on a daily basis of some health issues that could easily be prevented early on in life if you had good health habits. So I got in contact with Mrs. Majors, the principal at the elementary school, and I was able to make a video. It's about three minutes long, and I sent it over to her, and she sent it out to the kindergarten through fifth grade ages. And it was basically just a video, it's about three minutes long as I mentioned, but this is only a 30 minute clip. It's just a video that says like, things you should do like brush your teeth, wash your hands, drink water. It sounds silly, but you gotta remember the audience is K-5. And here's just a short clip. Developing all of these healthy habits will help you live a longer and healthier life. By developing these habits now, you will be able to use them for the future and benefit from them. Instead of drinking that pop or eating that candy bar, grab a glass of water with some fruit to better your body. Instead of staying up all night to watch your favorite movie, lay down and go to bed. And instead of saving time, wash those hands to keep your body healthy. All of these healthy habits are things you should be doing for yourself, especially during this crazy time. And then from some skills that I got from both of my internships, at SBT I learned a lot about organization. So as I mentioned with all the samples and putting samples away, in order to get those samples back to know where they are, you have to be organized. If you're not organized, you're going to be scrambling and looking around for days for things that you may want. And then also the design process, obviously. I had no experience going into either of these internships, and so as I went on through the time, I learned that the design process is very specific and you have to be very on point with everything you do or else one little inch can mess up your whole project. And then also professionalism. As I sat, on, sat in on client meetings, I had to know that as I'm not a qualified professional, I can't sit there and give my opinion because 
I have no experience. So I have to sit there, I have to be professional, and I have to listen. And then I went to primary care. I learned a lot about time management. As most of you probably know, doctors and nurses have to do lots of charting. You have to give every um, patient example and things they tell you on in writing, and then you have to transfer it later on into a document, and this takes time. Charting is a lot, because every single thing they tell you, you have to record for future uses and for their health. And so in between patients, you have to know that you have to get charting done. You can't sit around and talk, because or else you're going to be there all night. And then obviously giving shots, as I mentioned. And then listening and sympathy is just a huge thing you have to have in the medical field in general. And then some advice I got from my internships was jump at all opportunities and keep an open mind in everything you do. Don't let anything, any small thing or any big thing hold you back because you're scared. And then in saying this, I will be attending Pitt State University in the fall. Although I really loved my time at SBT, I think I've always known that the medical field is probably the best route for me. So I will be majoring in nursing at Pitt. And then I want to give a big thank you to both of my mentors for letting me into their workplaces during this crazy time, and also Ms. Clark for letting me secure these internships and be a part of the class. Lastly, for sitting tonight is Alexa Walker. So I would really like to start this by telling you how I really started thinking about teaching. So um, think of eight-year-old me. I was in third grade. I had Mrs. Rocker's class. Um, every day she would drink a soda. And eight-year-old me, I was obsessed with pop. Like I could drink a whole two-liter by myself if they let me. Um, I remember we were not allowed to drink soda at all. And so she would always send us to go get her a soda from the vending machines. And I was just so jealous. So I was like, you know, one day I want to be a teacher so I can basically torture my little children with drinking soda in front of them while they cannot drink it. Um, wrong reason to become a teacher, by the way. Don't become a teacher because of that. But um, that's really what started making me think about teaching. And so, yeah, I give my credit to Mr. Trotters for that. <laughs> so <laughs> my first internship was at Anvil High School. Um, they were the Indians. And I entered with Mrs. Hammerschmidt. She was a history teacher for them, and I got to sit in with one of her classes. Um, she was a very helpful person. She's kind, and she's always willing to help. She's definitely someone I can call in the future if I have any questions about anything. And she really just made sitting in with her class very enjoyable, because she'd always come and talk and answer any of my questions I had. Um, she went to K-State at first, and then didn't decide she wanted to do the major she went for. So then she went back to Fort Hayes and got her teaching degree, and she's been teaching for 17 years, which out of the three mentors I had was the second longest, and she's been teaching for four years at Yale. Her classroom, as you can see, not a whole lot of decorations, there's just kind of some mapping going on, some projects on the right side of the room, but overall it's pretty bare, not a whole lot going on. Um, these were some of the students, they were, very fun too, didn't talk a lot, more independent high schoolers. Um, and then I got to do a project with them, and my project was what's the word. And so basically what they were tasked to do is they had to figure out a word that explained 2021 for them. And so I made one, um, as many of you know, I'm not very tech savvy at all, I can barely work my phone. And so I made a hard copy, and that's mine in the top left corner. Um, I chose optimistic because I'm very optimistic about this year and I should be because I had great opportunities with internship. And so that is one of the students presenting. And then this is some more of them presenting. The top left is what I was really going for. He did an amazing job and I was just really surprised with how well the students did during this project. 
And then next, my internship was at Garden Plain Elementary, and they are the owls, so I said the owlets, because I'm with third grade, and they're little baby owls. Um, I was with Mrs. Rocker. She is very creative, adaptive, and she's very, very kind with the students. Um, I really liked adaptive because she has evolved so much from even when I was in third grade. Like, the things we were doing are completely different from what they were doing now. They got to do so much, like, building and stuff like that, and so I was just really, like, shocked because most teachers, when they find their role, they kind of stick with it. They don't change a lot, but she really has evolved so much, and she is such a nice person, so... She has been teaching for 22 years, which is the longest of my three mentors, and she has only taught at Garden Plain, and so I thought that was amazing too, because she hasn't jumped from school to school, and she attended Pitt State. Her classroom, as you can see, complete opposite of the high school classroom. There's a lot of decorating. Um, on the middle picture, the owls on one of the cabinets, it's all their birthdays, so she really made sure her kids were very like included in her classroom, and I really loved it because it's kind of that comforting feeling when you walk in, which is what third graders need at that age. Um, this is some of them at work. Like I said, they got to do so much building. So this was, they had to make a simple machine to lift a tiger, and they did amazing with this. Like, I was even sitting there watching them going, like, how are you thinking of this? Because my thing was just put something on wheels and go with it. And they were making helicopters and everything, and I'm like, okay, you do you. Like, you go with it. Um, one of the best moments of this internship was actually one of my first weeks there, and one of the little girls came up and asked me to go rollerblading with them, and I said yes, because why not, and it was so, so much fun. Um, we played tag. I felt like a third grader again myself. Um, it was just a lot of fun, and the bottom picture is all the girls in the class, and they were all so sweet, and the top picture, I tried to get some of the boys in there, but they kept skating off, so I did my best. Um, I got to do a project with them myself. I did a chocolate project to teach them fractions, and they were more obsessed with the chocolate than the fractions, so surprisingly they learned something from me. And then with the slime, I got to teach them about thermochemicals and how like heat can change things, and they made thermochromatic slime. And so that's some of the slime. It was a very hands-on project and a lot of fun. They did very well with it. And that's them making some more slime. Um, and lastly, I would just like to end third grade with another good thing that happened. On my last day, they had all made me note cards, and all the notes had, like, really inspirational things for third grade, and they were so much fun to read, and they really warmed my heart. Um, a few stuck out with me, because they were all saying, I hope you graduate, and I'm like, I hope I graduate too, because I made it this far, like, I really don't want to go back. So, yeah, they, I'm just grateful they hope I graduate. Uh, next, I was at Garden Plain again, but this time I was with middle school. I interned with Andrew Burkamp. Um, Mr. Burkamp is very smart. He knows a lot about what he's teaching, especially for having teach science last year and he's teaching history this year. He was very patient. He handles certain matters better than I possibly could have, and he was a lot of fun to be around. Some notes are uh, he went to K-State, but first he attended Hutch and he played football. And out of the three, he has been teaching the least amount of time for three years. And he student taught at Eisenhower and then came to Garden Lane. His classroom is the happy medium between Mrs. Rockers and Mrs. Hammerschmidt. He has bare walls in the third grade, but also more decorative walls in high school. It's um, a lot of maps because geography is huge in middle school. They learn so much about mapping. And it has a lot of like historical figures for them to look over. And then these are the fledglings, which is a juvenile owl. Um, as you can see, they are so excited to take notes because who doesn't love taking notes? Um, that's why I sat in on a lot of, because it was just a lot of note takings the day I was there. But they were still fun to be around. And I got to do a mapping project with them where they had to map the different continents and the different earthquakes and volcanoes, and I really learned at this point how students do not pay attention as well, because the directions were written in bold on the back, and one of the directions was label your continents in brown, and I had students coloring the continents in brown, and I'm like, okay buddy, you have to do something with that later, so hopefully you can color over the brown, and I also got to teach a lesson with them 
which really surprised me because I wouldn't think I'd be able to do that, but I got to teach a le lesson over how maps work and where everything was on the map, and that was a great experience for me as well. I feel bad for the first seventh grade class I was with because I didn't know what I was doing, but the second one got it very well, so that was a really good experience for me. And then this is them doing some more mapping. And so skills I got was classroom management. That was mainly in third grade because I started off very friendly. I had to work up the skill of classroom management because at first they kind of just walked all over me. I finally understand what people mean by it's hard to get it once you lose it because I really had to work hard to get them to listen to me. But they were a really good class, so I cannot complain. Um, relationship building is huge in teaching because the students don't want to listen to you unless you have a good relationship with them. You really have to have passion for what you're teaching or else you can seem kind of boring. Teamwork is huge because teaching is not just about you standing up here and teaching a subject. It's about the parents who help you, the people in the office who help you. There are so many people who go into teaching and that was really just cool for me to learn too. And then diverse teaching ways. Um, not every student learns the same, so you really have to reevaluate how you're teaching in classroom. And if the students don't get it, you have to reevaluate what you're saying so they can understand it. And you really have to have confidence in what you do. Um, so task I gotta do is teach kids about okay topics. So what I mean by okay topics is I would always run by what I was gonna do with the teachers, and they always said yes, so I gotta teach the kids about it. And it was just so much fun to do. Um, I got to help with math groups in third grade. I was never really good at math myself, and so this kind of helped me while I got to help them. And really helped in college algebra. Um, running errands, this was mainly for middle school. I got to run a lot of errands, put a lot of papers off, and thank God I was an office aide. Taking kids in small groups, I got to do that a lot in third grade too, kind of work one-on-one. -on -one. Get a feel for small groups before large. I got to grade in high school. I learned I'm an extremely hard grader, and so now I feel bad for all the teachers I was mad at for grading my projects very hard, because I graded so hard. It was awful. Um, and then checking work, I got to check some of the third graders' work before they turned it in, and it was just so much fun, yeah. My future plans are I plan to attend Pitt State University and get a degree in secondary education. I want to teach middle school history, because I really liked the curriculum and the kids were good. Um, it was really hard for me because I always thought high school was going to be my thing, but then I realized I like the kids who are a little more dependent, and I loved third grade, and I think that was hard for me because the students just, I was so attached to the students, but finally figured out maybe middle school is my thing. We'll see how that goes. And I'd just like to give a big thank you to Mrs. Clark for letting me be in the internship, um, all my mentors for letting me mentor with them, and Mr. Rockers, actually, for talking to Mrs. Clark to help me get into this internship class since I didn't take the class before. And yeah, it was just a great experience. Zoom. 
Um, I've had lots of kids that have gone down and been job shadowed. She has driven up here twice um, and, and brought supplies and equipment. We purchased a new espresso machine this year for the nest and she helped us set it up. She helped us program it. Um, and it's just been uh, nonstop help on her part um, the entire school year. There's no way we could have done um, what, what, what we've done. And I know um, she's answered hundreds of phone calls and emails from Lainey and I about what do we do now, what do we do now. And so I was hoping she would be on her little Zoom here, but it's okay. I'll drive, I'll drive down and have some of her baked goods and present to her. But our 2021 Business Partner of the Year is Christine Mayo and Pekarma Bakery. And every year we ask our interns, we, we, we discuss a little bit, we try to pick a mentor of the year, and it's always a hard decision um, because every mentor is great, every mentor means a lot to the kids, and, and after some discussion, um, I asked for some words who describes this mentor, and they said energetic, um, extraordinary, and inspiring, and uh, so Holly Rockers. We would like you to come on down. Thank you. 